Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about thread states and the join method in the thread class. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com and I'll select begin. This loads up. I'm gonna <clears throat> scroll down to the bottom here um, and select the thread class join method on the thread states here. Okay, so in this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to use the join method. When the join method is invoked on a child thread, the main thread is placed into one of the following states waiting or timed waiting. Now, when the main thread is in the state of waiting, it will not execute any more statements until the child thread is terminated. Um, when the main thread is in the state of time waiting, it will not execute any more statements, uh, I got move statements, more statements until the child thread has terminated or a certain number of milliseconds have passed. Now there are three overloaded versions of the join method. The first one is just plain old void join, right? And this causes the main thread to change state, well the main thread state to change to waiting. Then the next one is void join uh, milliseconds you can pass for the parameter there and that causes the main thread state to change to timed waiting for a certain number of milliseconds. And the last overloaded version is milliseconds and nanoseconds. And that causes the main thread state to change to timed waiting for a certain number of milliseconds plus nanoseconds. Now that's some precision. And all this will make sense when we execute the code and I talk about a bunch of stuff down there. So, but because of the way the join method changes the behavior of thread states, it is a perfect opportunity to demonstrate every thread state, every one of the thread states except blocked. Now, um, new basically, uh, new, it has been declared but is not yet started in this state. In this state, a thread is executing in the JVM. <clears throat> blocked, we won't worry about that now, but I went over what waiting and time waiting is, and then terminated a thread has exited in this state. All right, let's go ahead and come down here and highlight all this source code. This is gonna be a, it's gonna be a doozy today. You guys are gonna learn a lot here. So let's uh, highlight control C to copy, or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next, and finish. All right, let's open it up. First thing you want to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You want to make sure you get all this stuff scrolling by. If you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash. I'm going to make a directory here called Java using the md command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'm going to create it for you. I'll make another directory here, and I am just going to call this one thread join. Let's change directories to the thread join folder and I'm going to notepad thread join .java. Okay. Let's go ahead and paste all this stuff in here and let's come up here and save. All right. Um, the my calculations class. I've gone and um, changed that up from a little bit from the part four of the creating a thread tutorial there. Uh, now it extends thread. And so because it extends thread inside of the, um, the constructor here, right, I can simply call the start method, which is part of the thread class there, right? We go ahead and inherit that one there. So this one will basically auto start itself too. I showed in part four how to do one that'll automatically start itself in a, uh, you know, for a runnable there. But anyway, so I've got all kinds of the stuff displayed to the console here and I'll explain all that. Um, probably throughout the tutorial there. Oh, look at that, I got an extra semicolon. That won't hurt anything, that's just like executing an empty statement. Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm doing a protected, and I could have left this as, you know, default level or public, but I'm like, I so rarely use protected, why not use it? It's part of the same default class, or unnamed package, I guess we should say, so protected will work just fine. And I'm making this static so that we can access it from, directly from this class, right? There's no encapsulation on this whatsoever, and that's by design because we don't want um, um, to demonstrate the the state of the main thread. Um, we need to be able to access it from anywhere, right? Okay, so the the main thread is going to get the thread 
current thread, which happens to be, of course, the main thread. It doesn't have to be inside the main method to be the main thread, okay? This will return us back the main thread because it's inside of our class that it is evoked with the main method. All right, so with that being said, inside of the main method, I'm just gonna display this to the, the console there, and then I'm gonna display the main thread state plus, of course, and I'm directly doing this because it's static here, thread join dot main thread dot get state and the get state is part of the thread class and that'll return its its state and it'll show runnable at that point in time okay now um you notice i i got rid of my loop my little loop with all of the uh animations and everything like that and that's because of the join method here so what i'm going to do is i've still got these these like hundred or so calculations here for these numbers to figure out if they're prime and i'm invoking it the same way new my calculations passing it in the number that we want right and it'll go ahead and come down here and factor out that number but now as it's being created right here on the constructor right um it will display to the console well, first thing it'll do is it'll, you know, set the uh, the instance variable, the private instance variable number to factor equal to the parameter, right? But then it'll display the console. Uh, my calculations constructor, because that's where we're in right there, right? Before start, a state equals and this dot get state, okay? And that's before this start method right here is called. And then after start, the state equals this, okay? I just want you guys to see the result of that. Okay, and then I'm going to invoke the join method on this object here, right? And what that does is that will prevent our main thread up here from executing anything else until the child thread um, disappears. All right, so um, one other thing to note down here is, of course, start will call um, run, okay? And after is it prime is is uh, after this method finishes executing here, I'm going to go ahead and display to the console inside my calculations run the main thread state, and then I'm directly invoking right thread join, which is the name of the class up here main dot main thread right, which is the name of our thread, and I made it static and protected so we can see it within the same. Um, Package. We could have done that with default too as well, but anyway, and then I'm invoking the get state so we can see where our main thread is from within this thread while it's executing, okay? And that's important, and that's the whole reason why I made this static up here and put it up out of that, right? So we could just simply call it from right here and see where it's at, okay? See its current state. Because we can't say, for example, we can't put it on after, after this one here, right? Because like I said, the join method causes the main thread to go into a waiting or timed waiting, right? Okay, so right after we're done with this one here, I'm just gonna display uh, to the console inside main thread for loop, main thread state equals, and then show you what it is after this particular thread has um, come out of there, okay? And then I'm gonna display the number of active threads, just so you can just see how the join method works on that, okay? Let's go ahead and run this and clear up some confusion there. Let's clear our screen, Java C to compile, and Java to run this. Oh, what am I doing? <clears throat> okay. All right, so that whipped through a whole bunch of them there. Don't pay too much attention right now. You can see it's kind of it's kind of hung up right at the moment there, um, and that's because one of the child threads is is actually doing its thing there, right? And then some of them go faster, and some of them are a lot slower, like the uh, the ones that that divide out by huge numbers there. They're going to take a long time. So if you've been watching my other tutorials up up before now, right, you notice that, oh, we'd probably be done already because we're starting up all of these threads and utilizing um, basically all of the processors and all the cores and any, you know, any whatever on that. We're utilizing the hardware of the computer. This time we're not because each thread before it starts in the in the for loop here, right, it can't, it can only start one thread, one child thread right here because of the join method, all right? 
So it won't even continue on with the next iteration of the for loop until this is done and it's executed this and executed that and executed this, okay? So now let's take a look at, at what we've got there, right? Um, before the first thing displayed, well, let's go all the way back up here. That's uh, too far up there. Um, the first thing that's displayed here is uh, my calculations constructor before start state equals new. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna trim down the, the number that we're gonna look here to like just 100 just so we don't end up, because basically the first stuff we got off is it's too, uh, too far up there. 935, 937, so maybe we'll start at like 949, how's that? Okay, let's save this and run this again. I apologize, it's gonna take an extra second or two. Clear our screen. So we calculated a lot less of them there, a lot fewer ones there. So when we start up, it goes calculating primes. The main thread state at this point in time is runnable, right? And so that is the get state right there. So it's runnable. It's executing in the JVM, right? Okay, um, next thing we've got here is my calculations constructor. Before start, state equals. And so when we come down here to my calculations, right? We're looking at um, the my calculations object because we're doing this.getState, right? So you can see we're in the middle of the constructor right here, but its state is set to new. So that's what the new state is, right? Um, if we come back over here to my documentation up here, right, looking at the new, a thread has been declared but has not yet been started in this state, okay? Now the thread actually gets to be started. Let me get that off screen here. The thread actually gets to start right here after the start method is called. Now I display my calculations after start state equals, right? And now it's runnable, okay? So that's new and that's runnable. So that, that gives you an idea of the new state. New state is um, basically, it's like an object at that point, but it, um, it hasn't had the start method invoked on it yet. So it's in new, okay? Now, um, of course, we got whatever it's divisible by that. Now, the next one we're interested in is inside of my calculations run main thread state equals waiting. Okay, so the run method right here start basically you know starts the run method here, right? And after, of course, the constructor is done completing, as you can see, because um, basically that comes out of its loop, then it displays this right here, right? So we can see that, that inside my calculations run main thread state equals, and then I'm just directly invoking the get state method on the main thread um, object there from the, of course, the thread join, like the parent class there, right? Which is our main thread. So you can see here's its state as waiting, all right? So once run actually finishes down here, that will cause basically the my calculations thread object to, to terminate. And then at this point in time, which is this line of code up here that we've executed, then we can display inside main method for loop thread state equals, right? That's this one right here, thread state equals runnable. So now we're back to runnable. And then I just display active thread count right and there's just one and that's the main method running there right so to, to kind of recap there right join prevents the main method or main not main method main thread um, from executing any statements until this one is until this thread is actually terminated all right so that basically gives you an idea of new runnable and waiting all right, so let's talk about timed waiting for the next one here, right? So let's come up here. So we got over new, runnable, and waiting, right? Waiting, a thread is waiting indefinitely, a thread is waiting indefinitely for another thread to perform a particular action in this state, right? Um, and of course, that's, that's what the join method called that to do. So now our main method is in waiting, okay? All right, now let's talk about timed waiting, and it's really gonna be very, very easy to do that. We're just gonna come up here to the constructor that takes milliseconds, and we'll just put in, for example, um, 
500. So half a second there is the most it's going to wait there. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and you know what I want to do? I'm going to put this number back to 799. I want to demonstrate terminated as well. So I'm going to show you how that'll work here. All right, so let's come up here. Let's save this. Let's clear our screen. Let's recompile. Let's rerun. <clears throat> you can see active threads five. Uh, bada boom, bada bing, right? It's only waiting half a second for each one of these to continue there. Oop, we got six active threads. We got ending the main method, right? Oh, well, ending the main method um, is right in here, right? It's the last thing in the main method, but you can see we're still getting stuff completed here. And that's because, lo and behold, we still have, we have a total of six active threads right here at this point, right there, right? Um, and you can see it goes into timed waiting for its status on that there. Um, hold on a second, I'm gonna answer this call. Let me pause this video here. Okay, I'm back. Um, let's see. So <clears throat> basically, because we did the, you invoke the join passing it 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. Some of these longer ones here, right, especially the ones that are prime, had to take, uh, and then of course this guy, which is divisible 335 million or whatever, right? They took longer to run than half a second. So those threads um, basically waited for half a second to it to finish on the main thread, and it said, up oh, and up, it's still running. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and continue on with my for loop and go ahead and do my next iteration and print all that stuff out, right? But you can see down here on the last iteration of it there, um, there were six threads. Of course, one of them is the main thread, and then here's the other five right here, as you can see by these five numbers here. So those five child threads were still running. So you can run into the situation where the main, met the, the main method, the main thread is ended, and um, you'll still have child threads actually running, which is, which is interesting. Let's put it that way. It's not a good thing to occur. You really want to have the main thread to be your your last, um, you, really, you don't want child threads kind of running on La La Land there like this, but I just kind of wanted to show you how that lives. As you can see inside my calculations run, the main thread state is equal to terminated. Okay, so that pretty much covers all that there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this off screen and get that off screen. Just leave you guys with some final thoughts there, so. Um, now the way the the way the join method works is really pretty straightforward. You should now have a clear understanding of every thread thread state except for blocking, and I'll demonstrate how that one works in a future tutorial. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.